Now, let's look at the leading and trailing edge flaps. Leading and trailing edge flaps provide increased lift and decreased stall speed. There are three groups of leading edge flaps on each wing. The first group is outboard of the engines. The mid-span group is between the engines, and the third group is inboard of the engines. Trailing edge flaps consist of inboard flaps and outboard flaps on each wing. Opposite groups of trailing edge flaps are mechanically connected to maintain symmetry. The flap lever is located on the control stand. Flaps are selected by raising the lever and moving it to the desired detent. Positions 1 through 20 are maneuvering flap positions. Positions 10 and 20 are takeoff flap positions. Positions 25 and 30 are landing flap positions. gate at the flaps 20 detent prevents inadvertent retraction past the go-around flap setting. gate at the flaps 1 detent prevents inadvertent retraction of the remaining leading edge flap groups. Flap lever position is transmitted to three identical flap control units, or FCUs. The FCUs sequence and monitor flap operation. They also provide flap indications, flap load relief, and asymmetry protection. Each FCU is capable of performing any or all of the basic FCU functions independently. There are two modes of FCU flap control, the primary mode and the secondary mode. The secondary mode provides an automatic electric backup to the primary mode and will be discussed later. First, we will look at the primary mode. In the primary mode, the FCUs command drive units to drive the leading edge flaps using pneumatic power from the bleed air ducts. The FCUs command drive units to drive the trailing edge flaps using hydraulic power from systems 4 and 1. The FCUs automatically sequence the extension and retraction of leading and trailing edge flaps. Let's look at the normal sequence. With the flap lever in the flaps 1 detent, the mid-span and inboard leading edge flap groups are extended, and the trailing edge flaps are fully retracted. With the flap lever in the flaps 5 detent, all leading edge flap groups are extended, and the trailing edge flaps are in the flaps 5 position. When the flap lever is moved to the flaps 10, 20, 25, or 30 detents, the trailing edge flaps move to the selected position. Question.
Answer A is correct. Question. Answer C is correct. With the flap lever in the flaps 1 detent, the inboard and mid-span leading edge flap groups are extended and the trailing edge flaps are fully retracted. Let's discuss flap position indication. Flap position information is provided to ICAS by the FCUs. When all flap positions are normal, and the FCUs are in the primary mode. A single vertical indicator presents a combined display of leading and trailing edge flap positions. The position commanded by the flap lever is also displayed. When the mid-span and inboard leading edge flap groups are in transit, the vertical indicator is positioned halfway between up and one. When the mid-span and inboard leading edge flap groups are fully extended with all trailing edge flaps fully retracted, the vertical indicator is positioned at 1. For flaps 5 through flaps 30, the vertical indicator displays the position of the slowest trailing edge flap group. Leading edge flap group positions are only displayed under non-normal conditions and will be discussed later. When any flaps are in transit, the position commanded by the flap lever is displayed in magenta. When all flaps reach their commanded positions, the position commanded by the flap lever is displayed in green. When all flaps are fully retracted, up is displayed for 10 seconds. Then the entire flap position indication is no longer displayed. Now let's look at the secondary mode of the FCUs. If any flap group fails to move to the commanded position, the FCUs automatically switch to the secondary mode for the failed group. If a primary mode failure occurs in the mid-span or inboard leading edge flap groups, both groups switch to the secondary mode together. In the secondary mode, the FCUs command the drive units to drive leading or trailing edge flap groups using electric motors. The leading and trailing edge drive units all have electric motors. If any leading edge flap groups are driven in the secondary mode, the groups remain in the secondary mode until they reach the position commanded by the flap lever. They then reset to the primary mode. If a trailing edge flap group is in the secondary mode due to a lack of hydraulic pressure, and hydraulic pressure is then restored, the FCUs automatically switch back to the primary mode. However, if a trailing edge flap group is in the secondary mode, with hydraulic pressure available, the group remains in the secondary mode until it is fully retracted. Then it resets to the primary mode.